you're gonna want to stick around to see this i have been cooking man i've been cooking i'm freaking gordon ramsay over here cooking up stuff i'm sorry about that but over the past two months i have been prototyping i've been fielding ideas i have been getting stuff done and it feels so good honestly i've been prototyping so fast kind of feels illegal it's dramatic i know but seriously, I don't know if I've ever gotten this much done, this much prototyping done than I have over these past two months. I've even gotten this crazy idea that I've just been working on for three weeks and it's it's coming along so well that I'm, that's what I teased. Stick around at the end to see it. It's crazy. It is insane. Over the past two months, I've prototyped three different separate ideas which have led me to that project now. A project that, you know, is maybe a month or two away from being released completely with a demo, hopefully out in like a week or two. So that's what we're doing today. What have I been doing to prototype so fast? How can you do it? And what has this journey led to? That, that game that I've been teasing a lot. I'm gonna show it to you to prove that this has been crazy. How can we prototype faster? Let's get into it. Before I get into it, I need to give a major shout out to Edward. Edward Labarca, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but he has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna be showing it right now. He has been kind of just guiding me kind of along this path of all this amazing stuff. And I also gotta shout out uh, Mike at Faith Drawn Studios. These guys have been keeping me accountable, helping me along this journey. It's been, it's been fantastic. Go check them out. First things first. I am no guru. As I just said, I have been getting a lot of help along the way. These things that I'm gonna be talking about today have helped me so much, it's insane. So yes, first things first when you're trying to prototype faster is test your ideas and test them fast. How can we test them faster? What I was doing over these past two months is just asking myself three separate questions. Again, these work for me, they might not work for you, but they've been working for me. These three questions are, is it fun? Is it in my scope of knowledge? And is it doable in a realistic time frame? These are the three questions that I've been governing my prototyping with. How do I know if it's fun? How do I know if it's in my scope of knowledge? How do I know if I can do it in a realistic timeline? I ask people that I trust, I get some feedback, and just to just to show you guys and bring you along with the fun, I'm going to show you three of these projects. So this, I'm not sharing my screen. Let's jump over. Here we go. This this was my first prototype. Super, super bare bones. I was just trying to figure out the basis of these ideas, you know? And each one of these things I'm gonna be talking about today should build off of and hold the weight of one another. That might sound like gobbledygook, it'll make sense at the end. But this first idea, it is just, the, the idea is you just enter a room, you collect stuff, you try to survive, and then you go to the next room. That's all this first prototype game idea was. Literally, the player doesn't even have an, a, a walk animation, but you know, there's there's obstacles, I gotta avoid stuff, this guy has some aggro, I gotta watch out for him, I gotta collect stuff, I can talk to stuff, you know? And I think I have an attack function too, I'm getting wrecked. First question, is this fun? Is it in my knowledge? And can I get it done in a realistic time frame? Yes, it is in my knowledge, my scope of knowledge. Yes, I can get it in a time frame, but is it fun? Is it fun to play? Not really. Could I make it more fun to play? Sure I could, but I felt like I could offer more. So that was my first prototype. This is early December. Before we move on, I just want to drive home the idea of building off of your ideas. Just because this prototype is not going to work, that doesn't mean I can't take ideas from it and build on it on further prototypes. And that is key going forward. So now let's keep moving forward. Next thing on the list, after you kind of formulated your idea and started asking yourself these hard questions, start breaking down the game into granular tasks. Break it down break it down some more and then you guessed it break it down again into minute tasks such as get a player input system forwards and backwards don't worry about the don't worry about the sides just forward and backwards get um physics down obviously those can be big and depending on your scope and what you're familiar with and comfortable with those tasks are going to look different break them down into granular granular tasks and you know what this is going to reveal this is going to reveal the fat the stuff you can cut the stuff that you know what, that's kind of large over here and that's gonna take a lot of time. Let's cut it, let's get it out of here. And breaking things down and, and organizing them is going to reveal this to you because you're gonna see everything and everything is going to come to light and you're going to be able to recognize what is big and what is small. And hey, that thing over there, that kind of is a little big. Let's, let's see what we can do with it. Some stuff is gonna get cut. So let's talk about prototype number two. 
let's take a look at it again looks pretty familiar to the first one huh now i have a walking animation looks great i can collect stuff talk to people still instead of rooms now we're outside and again instead of rooms it's a level i can traverse this level not yet in this but in my products in in the gdd i had made for this it is a level now and i wanted to actually show that as well so this was the gdd this is where our character was in the scene you would traverse this level come across things and collect them in order to remove the blocks once you collect this the block will move if this would work the block will move and you can continue along the way and you go and collect this and then this block moves a lot of the way and then you go up here and you collect the last thing that was this prototype as I was going through it and, and figuring it out, I realized again, I, I asked myself these three questions and I started breaking it down. And I asked myself, is it fun? Is it in my scope of knowledge? And then can I get it done in a realistic time frame? Again, I came to the conclusion that yes, actually I do think this is much funner. I do think I could get it done and I do think it is in my scope of knowledge. But again, I was I came back to the conclusion that there's more to me that I could offer. And this kind of lies in the scope of knowledge. I can offer more in my knowledge. This is pretty easy for me to accomplish. And that's okay if you want to do that. But for myself, I felt like I could offer more. And that also comes down to the tasks. Breaking down these tasks, I realized that there isn't many. And that's good. That's okay. But again, it revealed that I had more to offer. And that's what this second part is about. Breaking it down. What's it reveal? It reveals that, oh, there's, there's something lacking here. There's too much over here. I can give more. That's what breaking it down does so ask yourself the questions and then break it down and have those two there and then we'll come up with the last one and here we go oh and that was end of december middle of january that's where that prototype took place so now let's go to the last one what's the last thing that has helped me prototype crazy fast it is deadlines 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 Deadlines, crazy deadlines, super specific deadlines, because you know why we can be specific with our deadlines? Because we broke everything down into granular tasks. When you pair deadlines with breaking tasks down, the world opens, the world opens to you because here's what it gives you. It gives you the freedom of focus, the freedom of Focus. When you have all your tasks laid out, all the tasks you need to finish this game, it gives you freedom because it allows you to focus. And if you set deadlines around those tasks, it allows you to focus on what needs to get done at that time and everything else is over there. You don't need to worry about that stuff because it, the time has been allocated to those deadlines. Things you're working on right now, those have deadlines and you need to meet those deadlines and those deadlines are the things that you're focused on. I know, let's take a look. It, it's confusing. It, maybe it's not confusing, but let's just take a look. This was the end of January now. Oops, uh, everything, this is actually, I actually have a much more detailed one, but I just wanted to show you this. Get deadlines for your granular tasks and it will just allow you to focus on on things like never before that's what it has done for me and I know it can happen for you break it down and so you saw those two other prototypes guys I am so proud of it this thing I'm about to show you took me about so that was the 13th of January we are now over here four weeks five weeks four weeks four weeks and I've been able to create this showed you is something that I am so incredibly proud of something that I built in three four weeks I have never built a game in 3d in the 3d engine of unity before I've only built 2d games and I yet I was able to make that 3d game like I said in like four weeks I don't want to show a lot of it I have a devlog coming out whenever I can get the demo done you guys are gonna be able to see this game again I am so incredibly proud of it and guys this is what I'm talking about this is what I've been working on this is what fast prototyping looks like because now I have this game that 
that checks all the boxes. It's fun to play. It's in my scope of knowledge and it can be done in a realistic time frame. That's crazy for that type of game. But it's not crazy because I've answered the questions and I've broken it down and I know all the tasks that it takes to complete it. And I set deadlines for them and it allows me to focus and I'm just moving at hyper speed right now. Guys, if you ask yourself these questions, if you break down the tasks and if you set deadlines, guys, you can prototype at breakneck speed. I'm telling you, it feels illegal. This is what's worked for me, but I'm curious. What has worked for you guys? What has allowed you to prototype faster? I want to hear it below. Guys, I cannot wait to show you this game. I'm working on building the Steam page right now so that you can wishlist it. Hit that subscribe button so you can see the game next week. Hit that like button. All that jazz, you know what to do. Guys, I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. Let me know if this ends up working for you guys. Thank you guys for being here. And I'll see you next week, guys. I'll see you next week.